Today I'm at Nakma Hill near Tum here in County Galway and there are so many stories here. There are cairns here that stretch back to 4000 BCE and in that time there's been quite a lot of folklore that has built up around this place. Canuck Ma, as it's called in Irish, means Maeve's Hill, and yes, that's Queen Maeve again, who I've mentioned before in relation to the Thorn. This place here, though, is renowned as the home of the Dhini Shi. They're the fairy people of Irish legend. The Dhini Shi are often considered to be descendants of the Tuatha Dé Danann. Now, the Tuatha Dé Danann were a most powerful, almost godlike race in Irish mythology. They were known for their incredible skills in magic, arts and warfare. But their reign over Ireland came to an end when they were defeated by the Milesians, who are said to be the ancestors of modern Irish people. But rather than leaving Ireland completely, the Tuatha Dé Danann retreated underground and became the Dini Shi, the fairy people. And they're believed to live in hidden realms beneath the hills and mounds of Ireland, such as here at Nochma Hill. At the top of the hill, you'll find three ancient cairns. One of these is said to be the palace of Finvara. Now, he was the king of the Shi. And another is believed to be the tomb of Queen Maeve of Connacht. And the third, a very interesting one, is called Cairn Castra and is thought to be the resting place of Kesser the first woman to set foot ever in Ireland. So we'll begin with her. Kesser's story, it's both sad and inspiring. Kesser was the granddaughter of Noah, of biblical fame, from the famous Ark story. It's said that when Noah was building his Ark, Kesser and her followers weren't allowed on board. They obviously didn't meet Noah's high expectations, I suppose. But Kesser was determined to survive. So she built her own ships and set out for Ireland with 50 women and three men. Now, why Ireland, you might ask? Well, it was supposed to be uninhabited back then, and so it wouldn't be affected by the floods because it was sinless. So they sailed off for seven long years before finally reaching a place called Dunnamark in Ireland. Two of their three ships were lost at sea on the way, and eventually everyone except for one man, Fintan, the shapeshifter, perished. Not only was Kesser said to be the first woman in Ireland, she is also credited with something quite unusual, and that is that she brought sheep to Ireland, and apparently this is a, a very significant part of her legacy. The ancient ruins and cairns here at Nakma are so old that some people believe they might be connected to her story. Moving down here to the base of the hill, we find the ruins of Castle Hackett here behind me, the historical estate of the Kerwin family from the 17th century. This location is also steeped in legend, particularly surrounding Lady Etna Kerwin. It's said that Lady Etna was kidnapped by the Shi and her husband was forced to undertake a daring rescue. Lady Etna's abduction was orchestrated by Finvara, or Finvar he's also known as, and he's the king of the fairies of course himself. Now this guy reminds me a little bit of Zeus from Greek mythology because the fairy king himself had a keen eye for the old mortal women, just like Zeus. But anyway, one night, he caught a sight of poor Aletna, and he immediately decided he wanted her. And without a second thought, he stole her and spirited her away to his underground palace up here in Nakma, uh, within his own fairy mound. And the story goes that poor Al Lord Kerwin, that's her, that's her husband, he wanted to get her back, obviously. So he went to the local Ban Fassa, the wise woman. She told him that he needed to dig into the fairy mound from the top to have any chance of finding his poor wife. That mound is on this hill too. It's called Finvara's castle now. So off he set with his shovel and night after night, he dug deeper and deeper into the mound in a desperate bid to find his poor wife. Now, 
obviously you don't disturb a mound and not upset the fairies. So they got cross and they decided they were going to cut him off. So they tried to scare him away with visions of doom and gloom, but he couldn't be dissuaded. Luckily, he eventually broke through to the underground, very beautiful underground realm. And there he found Lady Etna. But when he found her, she was under a powerful spell. A magical girdle had been placed around her waist by Finvara, and this had put her into a deep, unnatural sleep. It reminds me kind of of a coma. And even after being rescued from the mound, Etna remained in that sleep for a full year and a day. During this time, Lord Kerwin tried everything he could to wake her, but she wouldn't be stirred. So eventually he went back to the Banfasa and discovered that he only had to remove the magical girdle and that would be key to waking her. And sure enough, as soon as he took it off, Etna woke up. Now, the evidence of this, or if you want to call it that, uh, is that there is still a hole uh, that you can see that apparently Lord Kerwin dug in his quest to rescue his wife at the top of the hill. Now if we move forward to the 1840s, I have another story associated with the hill. Legend has it that just before the Garth the Moor, the Great Hunger, people around Knock Ma here reported seeing hundreds of fairies fighting in the sky. This was seen as a, an omen predicting the great turmoil that was about to befall the country with the famine. The fairies' battle was thought to signal a disturbance that would lead to Ireland's suffering. Some say it was even the source of the blight that killed the potatoes. Now, obviously, there's much, much more to the Gartha Moor than this, but I won't get into that here or I'll be here all day. Now, I told you before also that Queen Maeve, of course, is said to be buried at the top of Knock Naray, in County Sligo, not in County Galway. And indeed, there is an impressive cairn up there that you can see from a distance. And I always grew up believing that that's where she was buried. But the Galwegians, they wouldn't be outdone because they've also claimed that she's buried here. And they even went to the lengths of naming the whole hill after her. And if you remember, Maeve, Maeve was a fierce warrior queen and she was known for her battles with the hero, Cú Chulainn. If you ever do visit County Galway, or around Tume here in particular, make sure to explore Knock Ma Hill. It's really beautiful here and there are so many stories. And don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, The Sleepy Scholar. And tomorrow night I'll be delving even deeper into my own version of the story of Finn Vara and his midsummer bride, his summer solstice bride. So I hope I'll see you there. Flan Agus Banacht.